Always bring eye protection. We are gonna Kerbal here. Kerbal is serious business. Start new. Okay, so we're gonna be starting a new career mode game. Let me set my flagify here. I also got downloaded a Canadian flag pack. I'm not gonna use it. Um, I like how the Canadian flag pack also has the UK stuff, but I mean, you know, this is this is our dad. Father UK, Mother France. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna grab the what could possibly go wrong flag. We are gonna keep it on normal difficulty just because it's a good baseline, but Missing cruise respawn I'm going to turn off, which honestly we don't need because we're not going to be using the super Kerbals. We're already going to be using normal crew members, which I don't think would respawn. I think with this on, I think only the initial four Kerbals, the orange suited Kerbals respawn. I might be wrong. Maybe they always respawn. I have no idea. Uh, we'll leave things otherwise as is though, but that'll make things a little bit more interesting. We're going to be naming all of our Kerbals after subscribers. Many deaths. All right. Got it. So... We have, of course, the starting four Kerbals. So here we go. We've got these four. We can hire these, and there's mods you can do to rename them, or you can edit the save file, or all those things. We're going to skip it. Now, we are sort of going to cheat, because normally you have to pay to hire um, new Kerbals. Instead, I got a mod. Custom Kerbals, where we can add some people. So I'm going to add a handful of them over here. Uh, I've already grabbed the subscriber list, and I am re um, I've uh, randomized them as well. It so happens that TF2 Brum 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 is our very first Kerbal. We're going to do that. Um, I don't know, we should set these. I mean, these have literally zero impact on gameplay. So let's just have all my people, of course, are max courage and max stupidity. That's the only reason they would possibly agree to join in here, right? Next up, we're going to have... Uh, medical major. So, okay, good. It keeps all the settings there. Excellent. Then we're going to have music underscore symbol. All right. We'll get a few more. We've got dead meat 98. We've got, I don't have the thing up on my other screen right now, so I can't acknowledge that subscription. I'm terribly sorry. I only have so much monitor space. We have Gasa Mink. And you know what? I'm going to switch to making girls now. Boom. Those are all male. Genders, just like in real life, are being assigned semi-randomly. So if you don't like what you got, too bad. Next up, we've got Malkuth TV. We've got... We had dead meat, now we have dead man. 8 to 27. I should probably get rid of the junior in there. But, yeah, let's do that. Uh, we've got April Ryan, 22. Now, let's get rid of the junior for some of these now. And one more. And then we'll replace it as necessary. Uh, we've got Simkey, 16. All right, so that should give us a relatively good pool. Now, one of the reasons I made so many at a time instead of sort of one at a time is because careers, what job you are, whether you're a pilot, engineer, or scientist, is actually based on a hash of your name. You can't choose the job. Your name determines what your job is, much like in real life, sort of. There is a tendency. If your name is like, um, you know, John Baker, you actually have a slightly higher tendency to become a baker. So for some reason. We actually are above our max number of Kerbals. But that's because four of these guys... Can I just fire these four? Oh, nice! Yes! Okay! Gone! No orange-suited Kermans at all. Cheers. Okay. So, you've opened up Kerbal for the first time. You're playing in career mode. What does that mean? So first of all, there's sandbox mode, which honestly I don't recommend for first-time players. Because in sandbox mode, all the different items and everything that you can have are already unlocked and it's way too confusing to build the spaceship. Career mode, so the science mode, which is like, um, in science mode, you have to earn science. Hey, bark, bark like a dog. <laughs> a science mode, you have, do you start with very little things unlocked. You have to do things that earn you more science points that you can unlock more technologies and then move forward. Then there's career mode, which is like science mode, but also has money. So you have to worry about um, earning money, mostly by completing contracts and then you can use that to like fund more spaceship stuff and upgrade your buildings. That's the other thing. In sandbox and science mode, all your buildings in your space center here are already upgraded. Here, they're all very tiny, and we'll have to upgrade them. So, 25,000 Kerbal bucks. 
And right away, we can go, this, by the way, if you're a new player, this is the building you want to click on. It's really hard to see. It's kind of annoying. I didn't even know it was there the first playthrough. This is really important to the contract thing. So one of the mods I have installed is a historical space mission mod, which is why we have a little bit of unpleasant flag right over here. It's because it starts you off building some of the early German ballistic missiles. Uh, Nazis, what a bunch of poop heads, but a couple of them were pretty good at making rockets. Yeah. All right, so this quest is actually really easy. Make an, um, a crew incomplete, unmanned incomplete? So an unmanned thing that launches. We'll come back to that. We're going to go, we're going to start with the basic missions that are included in the normal um, Kerbal, which is launch our first vessel. This historical thing will get crazy later on. It'll be awesome. Uh, and gather scientific data from Kerbin. These are very easy contracts to accept. You can only have two at the start, so that's what we're going to start with. Werner von Braun. In fact, he's the reason that when you go into the vehicle assembly building, we have... Oh, I didn't get the pop-up for it. Um, I thought you could... Maybe I've already dismissed it in this reinstall. Normally, you have a uh, Werner von Kerman that comes up and tells you how to build spaceships. It's a reference to all that. All right. So, your first spaceship. So, you here, you build spaceships. On the left-hand side, you got a bunch of buttons for categories. You won't have these last three. Uh, they are coming from various mods that I've got. But, you will have this. First thing you want to do is put down a command pod. In fact, there is a very significant chance that most of the things are grayed out. You can't add it until you sort of started with a root piece. And the best root piece to start with is probably the command pod. This has a crew capacity of one. This is where your Kerbal will sit. Right over here. In this little tin can. And hopefully not die. You can choose which Kerbal is in here. Normally, if you're playing, um, the it automatically puts in the first person at the top of the list. So for me, it put in TF2, brum, brum, brum. In normal Kerbal, Jebediah Kerman is the first person in the list, um, and he is a pilot, and that's exactly who you want to have in here. So our first pilot in the list is going to be Medical Major Kerman. We're going to try to cycle our people around. We're going to try to give as many people experience as possible, but by luck of the random draw, Medical Ma Major Kerman Jr., has been elected to person our very first manned craft. Which probably means he's the first person that's going to die. But, you know, that's life. Okay. Um, next thing we need is we need some sort of go juice, right? The art of going into space involves putting an explosion underneath a space capsule and hopefully having that explosion send you up as opposed to in many bitty little pieces. To start off with, um, you won't have a fuel tank. I've got this because of reasons. And then under engines, you won't have this. This is a procedural SRB. You will have this, the Flea Solid Fuel Booster. The procedural parts are a mod that I've got that allow you to um, make your own versions of these. So SRBs are solid rocket boosters. They, um, the type of fuel that they use, you just light it and you go. It's like a firework. You have zero control. You can't throttle it, and you can't stop it once it has started. So these are both SRBs like that, as opposed to liquid fuel ones. Um, which, honestly, in regular space travel, you can't really throttle them either. But anyway. Uh, and really, so this is our first spaceship, is going to be that. I could use the procedural one. The nice thing about the procedural ones is they do... They do limit what you can do with them based on your tech level. So I can right click on this and change the, the length, for example, right? I can make it a little shorter, but I can't make it any longer because it won't let me make it longer than the current flea booster I've got. Same thing with the width. I could make it wider. Technically, I can make it a tiny fraction wider, um, but that's it. That's as far as I can make it right now because that's all the tech I have, but that's cool. And then you can tune the amount of thrust and do other things, and it's really going to be handy later. And the most important thing is you can choose the color. Ooh, purple. So, you know, big fan of that. Oh, there we go. Shiny, shiny, sort of a milled metal look. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring the diameter down, down so it's the standard 1.25 meter, which is everything else. This is basically the same as using the fleet. It's like exactly the same as using the fleet. Uh, we're going to want to be able to come down safely so that uh, medical major doesn't die. So we're going to go ahead and give him a parachute on the top of that thing. Um, demolition charge, if you need to blow up a piece, that's, that's a cool extra little mod addition. And we do have mystery goo containers. Which I guess we should include. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that our parachute, this might be a little too much weight for it. You know what we're going to do? We don't need to go high, we just need to hop. Technically, do a little bit of a hop. I'm going to shorten this SRB. 
And honestly, I think I would only give it like half the normal amount of fuel. Oh, even then it's got tons of Delta V. We're just gonna give it like a quarter tank of fuel. Just go up a little, then come right back down. Not too scary. And then we've got these mystery goo containers. So this is some sort of goo that we can run experiments on and see how like these sort of bacteria respond to different forces. Excellent. Um, other than that, oh, fins. So what fins do, I mean, everyone's thrown a dart or something at some point in their life, right? Fins sort of do two things. They give you a little bit of drag sort of at the back end of the ship to sort of keep it pulled that way. But also what happens is normally they're cutting into the air straight. If ever you get a slight an angle compared to the direction you're going in, then the air is going to be pushing down on this side, which pushes it back straight. Same thing on the other side, pushes it back straight. So it helps to keep you going straight up, which is nice. This is not necessary. And yes, the parachute staging. So at this point, normally what you would want to do is do this. You want to rearrange your stages. So every time you hit the space bar, you start a stage. So you want really stage one to be launch the, uh, the engine. Then once this burns out and you're not going at an awkward speed, you're going to want to hit space again to launch the parachute. I'm going to try something. Don't try this at home, but I accidentally did this in my test run earlier and it was kind of epic. So hold on, we're going to try this. So um, we're just going to call this what are we going to call it? Just like the, it's like the flea hopper or something like that. It's just some little temporary test ship um, with the, with medical major in here. All right. And a couple of experiments. Okay. We are going to go ahead and save and launch. <laughs> Nulani says yes. And now I'm no longer allowed to throw darts. Okay, so ignoring some of the extra stuff on screen, at this point, this was a new run through, what your goal is, is you want to try to collect a little bit of science. And you can do some of that on the launch pad. I mean, think about it. With like all these space missions, they would launch the first one. They'd assemble the rocket and then get all the astronauts in there and like turn on all the switches and make sure that everything was working okay. And that's what we're going to do first over here. People are freaking out about the parachute. There's a chance something really cool is going to happen. Something terrible might happen as well. But hold on, I'm doing this on purpose with the staging just because it's going to look neat. So there's a bunch of science you can do. You can right click on your capsule here and you can get a crew report. Hey, uh, medical major, how's things in there? We write it down. Okay, things are fine. Um, okay, so we're going to keep that data. I don't have an antenna, so I can't transmit it. So we're going to keep that data. And why don't we check the goo containers? Maybe they've got something interesting going on here on the launch pad. Goo doesn't seem to be doing much right now. OK, well, you know what? We'll, we'll keep that data. That's going to be fine, too. Um, we should try a little EVA. Make sure the escape hatch works. So to do that, the easiest way is to go down to the little portrait of your dude over here. Um, do I want to move my face? No, I think I'm going to leave it here, and then I'll, I'll move the orbit info somewhere else, up here, and the Delta V stats. There we go. That'll be better. Um, you can EVA here. We'll just step outside, medical major. And then you know, when we're out here, we can do something called an EVA report. There we go. It's not the most precarious situation. Technically, this counts as flying over Kerbin Shores. We are indeed near the, uh, the shore over here. This counts as flying over Kerbin Shores. It's worth 5.6 science, though. That's a lot. We're going to keep that. Now, there's something else we're going to do. It's a funny little trick. Um, you can right click on the command pod where you're out. You can take the data out of it. This would be the crew report. Because you can't actually have multiple crew reports or multiple science things in a row. So if you just do a crew report, you won't be able to do another crew report unless you throw out the previous uh, research. But if you're outside, you can take the crew report out and then you can store everything back in. I don't know, you'd like put it under the seat or something like that. Then when we go back in, we'll be able to do more crew reports from different what's called biomes or areas or things like that. For what, so when we're actually flying, for example, um, we can lubricate the reaction wheel, take spares, repair the insulation. Oh, that's because I'm running a mod called Dang It. There's going to be a chance when we do this, there's a random chance that stuff might just break sometimes. I had that happen in one of my test runs. I, I, I set up an airplane to make sure I knew how to use the, uh, the FIR um, uh, sort of aerodynamics. And I, I took off my plane. And I'd been flying for like a minute and the engine just died. And it was a random failure from this dang it mod, which should keep things interesting. Anyway, the other thing we can do, you can't reuse the goo containers, but what you can do is you can collect the data from them. And then again, you can store it in the pod if you would like. Now, we're actually not going to launch this one. We're going we're gonna to redo it in a second because what I want to do here is I actually want to go and I want to climb down 
land on the fin in a very painful way. Ow! And then run over here. And Medical Major is going to do another EVA report from the ground. Not terribly exciting. I don't think a spacesuit was entirely necessary to get here, was it? No, not that. But we get 2.4 more science. Now, because we haven't discovered ladders, I can't get back in there. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and we're going to recover the vessel. In this case, that means uh, Medical Major over here. Do -do -do. Carnage! My year old who loves KSB is watching you for the first time. It'd be great if you could give my shout out. It's named Travis, and we're in Sweden. Sweden? I like Sweden. And thank you very much for watching, Travis. I want to go back to Sweden. It's been too long. Okay. So we've we've successfully rescued medical major uh, Kerman Jr. from the launch pad. How exciting. Um, and he brought with him a little bit of science. Um, he brought the 2.4 science from his EV on the ground. And because we recovered a vessel that survived a flight. We got five science. You only get that one time, but we got some extra bit of science there. And then, this is my new, and a medical major gained one XP. Excellent. This is my new favorite mod. It's called Final Frontier. After every mission, there's a chance that your people get awarded little medals or ribbons, you know, to put on their chest, like the military things. So medical major Kerman Jr. got a ribbon for operational service, uh, awarded for completing at least a single mission as a pilot. And first Kerbin surface EVA ribbon. Warded for the first Kerbin taking footsteps on Kerbin because no one's ever done that. But you know, in the spacesuit, we're testing out machinery. So he'll have that forever, which is great. Um, no, which one is it? No, that's the mission thing. There's a way to, oh, right here, Final Frontier. Uh, we can go and like find out the stats for everyone. Um, the ribbons, so these are all the ribbons, for example, and we can click on Medical Major over here and see his information, all his flight time, number of completed missions. I love it so much. Okay, we still have the spaceship on the launch pad, so let's go ahead and recover the Flea Hopper. It's got some science stored up too, so we're going to get some bonus points there. And we'll get all our money back, because we didn't actually fly this thing, so we didn't spend any money doing that. But right away, we got 18 science. Boo-choo! Okay, um, so what we're going to do, anyway, let's do a little quick save. We're going to launch that again. Since I've already built it, I can just click on the launch pad, uh, make sure the flea hopper is selected, make sure that we've got a pilot. Medical Major, do we want to have him pilot it again? He doesn't have one star of experience yet, and we promised him the first flight. So let's go ahead and put him in the seat and go and launch that. So I still have the weird staging with the parachute. So let's see. I'm hoping that this will do something neat. Don't try this at home. Uh, throttle doesn't matter because we are SRBs. They only have one throttle. We are going to hit the T key to turn on the SAS because Medical Major is a pilot. He can try to keep it steady. And I'm going to hit spacebar. What's going to happen when I hit spacebar, the engine's going to light and the parachute is going to deploy. This will either kill Medical Major or it'll look really cool. Whoa, laggy. There we go. <laughs> okay, this wasn't that quite as exciting as last time because I didn't have enough fuel. But what happened, like, the, for the fire didn't destroy the parachute when I did this accidentally last time, but I had a lot more fuel. So it was trying to burn while the parachute was also fully extended and it couldn't do it. The max speed I could hit was about 18 meters per second. Even with the engine going full burn because the parachute was holding it back. I got more science to do. I have a cool mod called Science Alert, which makes it easier than clicking on things. We're gonna do a crew report over here. Shores look inviting as you watch the waves roll into the coast. So we get another crew report from the air and another mystery goo observation from the air. So we get seven science from that one. The goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. Excellent. I'm a little worried, and I think I shouldn't have put the, um, I shouldn't have put the fins on because it's made us a little too heavy. I'm actually worried that we're gonna land too heavy. Um, there's a possibility this engine will explode because we're going to land at about 8.8 .8 meters per second. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of physics warp here. Physics warp is risky when you've got a big ship with a tiny ship like this. It's unlikely to break. Uh, there's a chance this engine is going to explode on contact. Hopefully the crew cabin will survive, especially since it's got our science. And we are landing directly on the launch pad. It would suck if we crashed into it and broke our launch pad, which can happen. Hey, we're fine. Victory. So normally you would split your uh, your parachute and your engine to two separate stages, but it was so funny when I accidentally did it earlier, I wanted to do it again. It was less impressive because I didn't have that much gas. But that's the thing, your first go, you're not going for height or distance or all those things. You do get a couple extra rewards for those things, but mostly safety is a key, so why not just you know underrate the engines? Don't fill them up. Medical Major just got some more ribbons. Award for researching 10 or more science. He got uh, first landing on Kerbin ribbon. 
And he got a G-Force. G-Force 14 rivet. Awarded for withstanding an acceleration of at least 14 Gs for three or more seconds. I don't know if there's... I don't know if we'll ever get that much more. We had insane Gs. Was it on launch? Or was it when the parachute opened while the engine was going? So we're going super fast, the parachute opened, and just they just braked. He probably broke several ribs, actually. Wow. Anyway, <clears throat> there is our um, there's our first actual flight complete. Excellent. We can go look for contracts at this point, because we have completed both contracts. So there's two more standard ones here, Escape the Atmosphere and Orbit Kerbin. We could also try the first A3 uh, rocket launch. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that going. We'll get 10,000 space bucks in advance, 7,500 upon completion, plus some more science and some more fame. All we have to do is launch an unmanned vessel. Sounds great. Let's go ahead and accept that, accept that one. Um... And why don't we take the, uh, we'll take the test, the flea. So this is interesting. These test missions just require you to activate or use a part in the right circumstances. The easiest ones are the ones that say, um, at the launch site or at Kerbin, not above Kerbin, but at Kerbin, because you literally just have to launch them on the ground. So we'll take one of these and then we'll do the other one afterwards. So let's, uh, when we've got some science, 34 science, we're going to unlock some things. Uh, certainly, we could go and unlock basic rocketry, get our first uh, liquid fuel engines, which are going to be really handy really soon. Uh, but under engineering, there's some good stuff there. There's more science from the Science Junior. Also, because I've got the D-Magic mod, we've got another science experiment called the Magno Magnetometer Boom, which you can never say, right? Uh, also gives us a decoupler, which is really, really important, an antenna, which is also good, and then some bits for KIS. In any case, this is only five and this is only five, we probably will want that as well. Now we're left with 24, which is enough to unlock one more thing. And I think, even though this is not very Kerbal, I think I will unlock survivability. And the reason for that is, um, it's that it unlocks, it does unlock some life support stuff, not that we need that yet, and again, that's a modded thing. Um, but it unlocks the radial parachutes, which give you a lot more interesting um, options. It unlocks the heat shield, which will... We won't need for a while, but it'll still be decent. Also unlock some wheels that we can use later on. Alternatively, we could unlock stability. We really don't need stability right now. And General Rocketry does give the swivel engine, which is really nice. But you know what? I'm going to go for survivability. Um, and we're, we're going to be able to get some more science for these other things really, really soon. So let's try to do the next mission. Who dat? 91-bit with a one-year subscription. Thank you very much, 91-bit. Or 9-1-bit. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try an unmanned one, which never mind, we can't do an unmanned one yet. We don't have a probe core. Okay, so scratch that. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna complete our contract to test the flea solid rocket booster. Now, what we can do is we can launch this thing. That'll count. As long as you launch it, it's fine. But there's an interesting trick. You don't actually have to go anywhere. You just have to turn it on. Basically, you just have to hit the buttons and make sure that all the lights turn on and the valves open up and whatever. So what we can do is completely empty the fleet of fuel so it can't go anywhere. That will still count as a test. And let's uh, let's go and throw uh, an engineer. Sounds like a great idea. We're going to have TF2 brum, 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 test out this module. Let's just throw them on the launch pad. We'll hit the go button. That'll complete the quest. And then we'll pick everything up. Easy peasy. And that'll complete that uh, mission, which is extra money and a little bit of extra um, science. So those are the previous contracts. So if I hit that, you can see completed contract. Tested the flea, got 4,500 uh, Kerbal bucks and an extra point of science for that. And then we can just go and recover the vessel. So TF2, brum, brum, brum. Your first flight didn't involve any flying, but you're doing good engineer stuff and testing out technology. Boom. And I, I think it's very realistic. It's like... You know, it's sort of like a little cheesy in a way, like you're turning off the fuel, but it's like, it's so real. Like, yeah, we're going to put the stuff on the launch pad and hit the buttons, make sure they turn on. And then we're satisfied about that. Good. So let's go and do the other one, which is to test the hammer okay. SRB. Same thing as the fleet, just a little bit bigger. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Do, do, do. Uh, uh, ingings. Yes, I am going to use the rule that I always had before, which is that I must have a pilot flying. Um... That's it's not something you need to do in the game. Later on, when you do get probe cores, you can have a capsule and you can have a probe core. And the probe core, the computer there, can handle your SAS and different things like that. But I make it a personal rule to require a pilot because I think it's thematically better. And it makes the game slightly harder. So, the hammer is the next thing we've got to test. It's just two fleas glued together, basically. Um, same thing. Get rid of the fuel. 
and we're gonna have TF2 brum 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 do another test flight over here. Hit the buttons, make sure it turns on. Good. Oh yes, we got a Science Junior on, this, on launch pad. Actually, I could have had TF2 brum 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 do that for me right now. All right. Hit space to go, and that's another contract completed. You know, just an easy way to get a few early funds. Couple extra bits of science. Speaking of science, we're gonna do some really fun sciencey stuff right now. 